Okay. Bottom. Well, welcome to a new life in Christ Jesus Church where Jesus Christ is glorified. Well, we want to thank God for this opportunity that he have allowed us to come together one more time. Amen. Let us stand and pray. Amen. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, Father, that you have given us eyes to see, ears to hear. And God, and as we are in your presence, we will be led by your spirit. You will give us the utterance, the things that we should say, when we should say them. And God, your name will be glorified. Because, God, we are yielding to you, not to the will of man. We ask you, Father, to anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a ready writer to write your word upon the hearts, upon the mind of your people, that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And, Father, we covenant with you now that we will give you all the glory, honor, and praise in the glorious and mighty majestic name of Jesus. And all the beauty that said, amen and amen. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. Welcome to New Life of Christ Jesus Church. Where Jesus Christ is glorified. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, my God. I need you to go to my car. On the, yeah. On the back seat, get that iPad for me. Amen. Glory to God. Well, it's a good day, and it's a good it's a good time to be in the house of the Lord. I'm telling you, we serve a good God. We serve a good God. Our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. Amen. But well, we've been dealing with this lesson here for a little while now, <clears throat> and we're going to be dealing with it for another good while, okay? So I don't want you to... I just want you to just uh, prepare your heart for this because this is not something that's going to, we're going to stick with this for a little while. Amen. And we're going to continue with this as the Lord leads. But right now, I want to thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Amen. I thank God for this, uh, for giving us the opportunity to come today and to present to you the living word of God. Amen. So as we come, we come with our hearts open. Amen. To do the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. There we go. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm just getting this right here set up for a second here. It won't take me another second, and we'll be ready. We'll be ready to. There we go. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, I want you to turn your Bible with me to the book of Matthew. There we go. Thank you, Lord. The book of Matthew. And let's look at chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Amen. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 16. Are you there? Okay. Amen. Now my unit is there also. Matthew chapter 16. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. 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 Chapter 16. Look at verse number 13. Matthew chapter 16. We're going to start reading right there at verse number 13. 13. Amen. And when Jesus came to the coast of Caesar Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, 
Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others one of the prophets, or Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But notice how Jesus brought the question right home to them, because you see, we still to today need to be able to answer this question, amen, ourselves in our day and time, amen, because they were put to the test in their time, and now it's time for you to have that, that same ability to answer the question, who do men say that Jesus is today, amen, verse number 15 says, Matthew uh, 16, 15, and he, said unto, and he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Jesus brought it right home to get it, to get the answer from those that say that they know him, from those that say that they are following him. Jesus asked them directly, Who do you say that I am? And out of all the twelve, only one was able to receive the knowledge of who Jesus was. And it was by the Spirit of God, not by the will of man, but by the Spirit of God. And what did what he said? And he said, and Peter said, what did he say right here? Amen. And and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the Living God. Amen. Thou art Christ, and upon and and, 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 uh, and the Son of the Living God. Oh, hallelujah. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Amen. See, this word Peter here is, 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 is two words in the Greek. The first word of Petra, which means uh, a, 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 a small stone, a, de a detached stone, amen. And pet, one is Petro and Petra. Uh, the second Peter is the Petra, amen, which means a uh, foundational stone, foundational stone, amen. So when we look at this, we see that we see that God imparted from heaven into Peter's heart revelation knowledge of who Christ was, or who Christ is, amen, and Jesus looked at him and said, Simon by Jonah, flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven, amen, and, and then, and then and li listen to what Jesus said upon that knowledge, Jesus said, upon this rock, in other words, upon this truth upon this revelation I will build my church I will establish my church amen and he said and, and I like this part because he said right here verse number verse number uh, uh, 17 and, 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 and he, Jesus answered said unto him he, uh, blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Amen. But my Father which is in heaven. And verse number 18 says, And I say and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. I mean, that means a small stone. A, a, a small, a, a separated stone. One that's been separated. Amen. Upon this stone, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. See, now that stone has turned to a solid foundation. God is establishing a foundation in the heart. Now, he, now, now if we want to succeed, if we want to uh, excel in the things that God has given us, in the things that God has called us to do, then we must be willing we must be willing to come to understand who Christ is. Amen. Because it says upon this rock, 
the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Now, so that means that we have to have the same knowledge of who Jesus is, even as Peter had, if we're going to stand in these last days. Amen. If we're going to stand in these last days, we're going to have to have that same knowledge that's, that Peter had. We need to have that revelation in our hearts who Jesus really is. Amen. For without that revelation, you will not be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in our places. Amen. But Jesus told Peter, he said, Upon this rock, upon this revelation, I will build my church. Amen. And then he goes on to say, And the gates of the kingdom of darkness will not be able to withstand it. Or, or, or prevail against it, or overcome it, or stop it. Amen. So God has given us the. Now I like this part right here. He said, "Behold, I give unto you what the, key. the keys, the keys." See, God has not only given us. Uh, he's not only given us the, the revelation knowledge to build the poem, but He's also given us the the keys. Amen. And He said, "Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven." And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In other words, God said that whatever you allow will be allowed in heaven. And whatever you disallow will be disallowed in heaven. Behold, I have given you the power. I have given you the authority. I have given you the ability to carry out this assignment. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And so he has given us the authority. He has given us the power. He has given us the ability to carry out this assignment. But the church has to come to the knowledge of who he is. In order for that authority and that knowledge to be uh, recognized within them. Yeah. Amen. And then, folks, you got to come clean. <laughs> you got to come clean. Amen. You got to come clean. Why? Because God is holy. God is holy. Amen. God is holy. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Why? Because he's holy. He's holy. Amen. God wants God want to break through into your spirit with the clear revelation of the power and authority he wants you to use as you take your place in the kingdom by putting down, pulling down the enemy stronghold. How are we going to pull down the enemy stronghold? By exercising divine authority that God has given us. Amen. By exercising divine authority that God has given us. Amen. In order for us to take the kingdom, amen. See, the kingdom of God does what? Suffered what? Violence. And the violent must do what? Take it. Take it by force. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. So if the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent must take it by force, then God has given us the means whereby we can take the kingdom. Amen. We can take the kingdom. We must locate our spiritual vision. Our spiritual vision. Amen. Because, see, God has given us vision beyond vision. He has given us sight beyond sight. Amen. But you got to be able to, you got to be able to, to focus by the Spirit. Amen. Because the, the vision that God has given you is supernatural. Amen. It's not a natural vision. The natural vision, you can see just things around you. But with the supernatural vision, you can look beyond this natural. Hallelujah. You can look beyond this natural. And you can see the things that God, the thing, the thing that concern the heart of God. Amen. Why? How can you see that? Because you're connected to the vine. He said, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you are the branches and you connect to the vine, then you have been given supernatural vision. Amen. Insight. Oh, glory to God. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So when we look, when we can get an understanding of this, we can see what God is, we can see what God is carrying us. But first, we can how can you how can you fight an enemy you have not uh, marked? See, you need to you need to locate this enemy. You need to put a check mark on it. Say, your 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 days are numbered. <laughs> Amen. You need to, you need to, you need to let him know that you that, that that you are aware of his presence. Mm -hmm. And once you become aware of his presence, now it's time for you to begin to deal with that enemy. Amen. That's why that's why he said in in. Uh, and uh, that's why he said in, in, in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 14, he said, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face and pray 
and turn from their wicked ways. And then will I hear from heaven. See, if we want to, if we want to hear from heaven, then we we need to we need to we need to operate according to heaven to to, to heaven's rules. Amen. We have to engage his enemy. We can't allow this enemy to keep running rampant. We got to stand up and be the church that God called us to be. God did not call the church to be a, a laid back, uh, 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 sedated. I'm gonna say it like this: sedated, lazy <laughs> Christians. Amen. Amen. It's time for the church to rise up. It's time for the church to begin to take dominion. Because God has given us dominion over all the work of his hand. It's time for the church to begin to take dominion. The dominion that God has given. Amen. When God brought us into this promised land, God didn't tell us to, to be overcome by the enemy. He told us to overcome the enemy. Amen. Amen. So we need to we need to begin to get our ducks in order. Amen. We need to begin to see ourselves as God sees us. God sees us as an overcoming church. We overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. God sees us as overcomers. God doesn't see us as being overcome by the enemy. Amen. Yes, darkness is all around. And yes, there are plenty of uh, things that's happening all around us. Amen. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. But he's given us a spirit of power. He's given us a spirit of love and a spirit of a sound mind. Now, God don't care where, where you are. Amen. God don't care where you are. You could be in, you could be in, in, in Egypt. You could be in Africa. You could be in, in New York. You could be in, in Walla Walla. You could be in Pango, pango, glory to God. Wherever you are, God is there because you're there. God is there because he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And when you take a stand upon the word of God, God is going to take a stand with you. Amen. God is going to take a stand with you. He said, behold, I give unto you power. Behold, I give unto you power to shred over serpents and over scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. God is not going to leave you comfortless. God will come to you at the appointed time when you think not. There he is. Glory to God. He's right there working with you, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. So when we look at this, we know that Bible says that man is created in the image of God. The image of the image of, of the image of God is not in our physical features. Amen. Because see, God's a spirit. We're not looking at our futures. Amen. Because, see, God said he created us man in his image and after his likeness. So what is God like? The Bible tells us in John chapter 4, verse number 24, that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him what? Power. In spirit and in truth. So <clears throat> if God is a spirit and we've been created in his image, that show, that that that, that implies that I am what? Spirit. I am spirit. The Bible tells me that also in First Thess in First Thessalonians chapter five, verse number twenty-three. Mm -hmm. Amen. So God is showing us all these things, and He's bringing all these things back to our remembrance. Why? Because He wants us to begin to focus in this manner. Amen. He wants us to begin to focus in this manner because until you are able to see who Jesus is, you will never be able to walk in the authority of His Word. Amen. You got to come to the knowledge of who he is in order to walk in the authority of his word. God's word will not return void. God will confirm his word with sign following. Amen. That's why it's so important that we come to the knowledge of who Jesus is. Because when you come to the knowledge of who Jesus is, you'll find out that God will begin to establish, he began to build upon that knowledge. And then what he did for Peter? He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Amen. So now some say that's when the church first began, when Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Some say that when the church began. Some say the church began and when the, on the day of Pentecost. Amen. When the spirit came in as a rushing mighty wind in Acts chapter 2. Amen. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set up on each of them. Now some say, say, some say that that's when the church began. Amen. And some say the church begun when Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Amen. So there's several errors. So we there's several errors that, that, that people are saying. Amen. But I'm going to stick with what the Bible says. Amen. Because the Bible never lies. The Bible don't it, it, it might it, it might sound contradictory sometimes, but the Bible is always true. 
Amen. Amen. The Bible is always true. You, that's why he said to search the scriptures. And therein you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. So when I look at this, I know that God is dealing with, I know God is doing something here. Amen. So the Bible says that man is created in the image of God. The image of God, the image, the image of God is not a, a physical uh, futures that, but uh, but within us, He is. See, God is within us. Amen. Three things God never intended for man to uh, possess, and one of them, He doesn't want you to walk around possessing sin. He didn't want sin to possess you neither. <laughs> Amen. God wants you to be holy. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. Amen. So he said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. So God doesn't want, see, sin, sickness, and death. These are three things that God doesn't want you to be, uh, to possess. Amen. He don't want you to partake of. But you know, sometimes, sometimes you're gonna to have to, you're gonna to have to uh, come to the knowledge of who Christ really is, because God is going, God is bringing us to a place. Amen. God is bringing to a place in Him where we, it's just like you ever, you ever, you ever, you ever thought about spending time with God? Then you just go for a walk, and just, you just, you know, just go for a walk. And you're just talking to God. It's just like, just like Jesus, it's just like uh, uh, Adam and God in the Garden of Eden. Amen. You out taking your walk. You out taking your walk. You spend the time just you and God. You just walking and just talking to God. Your only purpose of walking is to spend time with God. Amen. Okay, whatever that coming from, I don't know. Amen. I plead the blood of it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. But whatever you're walking, whatever you whatever, you just take that walk, and you're not walking just to, you know for for no purpose at all. You're walking just to spend time with God, mm -hmm. and it's just like Jesus walking in the Garden of Eden, <laughs> walking in the Garden of Eden. Amen. Just like Adam, I mean Adam and God walking in the Garden of Eden. Amen. And I want you to know that God want to walk with you. God want to talk with you. A closer walk. God, that's right. What, what that song said, just a closer walk with thee. Amen. God want a closer walk with you. Amen. He want a closer walk with you. So let's, let's put our hearts in the right perspective so that walk will grow closer, will draw closer to the things of God. Amen. Amen. To the things of God. So the Bible tells us right here in the book of Matthew once again, Book of Matthew, once again, chapter 16 and verse number and verse number uh, 18 it says, And I say unto, and I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Glory to God. Now let's look at that what the F5 Bible says about that verse. Amen. If you don't mind. I want to read, I want to, I want to come to my M5 Bible real quick, and I want to read that again, amen, and that's what now, that's uh, Matthew what? 16. Matthew 16, Matthew 16, here we go, and verse number what? 18. Verse number 18, there you go, y'all keep it up with me out there, that's good, I'm glad, amen, Matthew 16, 18, it said, I, and I say, and I say to you, that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, death, will not overpower it by, prevailing the re by preventing the resurrection of Christ, of the, of the Christ. Amen. So when, you, when, we, when we're taking a bold stand with God, we're saying, God, your word declares it. Now, I believe it, and I'm just going to let that be, uh, that's, uh, that just settled in my heart right there. Amen. Jesus' words, I will build my church, were a, fore, were, were a foretelling of what was about to happen in the very near future. Amen. When he, sent, when he sent the Holy Ghost, when he sent the Holy Ghost, 
to indwell believers in John chapter 15. Amen. In John chapter 15, let's look at that. John chapter 15, verse number 26 and 27. John 15, verse 26 and 27. Amen. Y'all, we're going we're gonna to get through a few scriptures today. John 15. There we go. <clears throat> John 15, verse number 26. There we go. There we go. Now notice what it said right in verse number 26. And but but when the comforter is come, see, he got got he getting the church ready now. Because see what Jesus prophesied over Peter was, was foretelling what was really going to take place. And right here, we see right here in, in uh, Peter, in, uh, in, uh, in John chapter chapter 15, verse number 26, that and, but uh, but when the comforter is come, whom the Father will when whom Father will send unto you, Amen. Mm -hmm. From the Father, glory to God. Even the even the Spirit of Truth, which proceeded from the Father, He shall what testify of me. He shall testify of me. Amen. Verse number 27. And ye and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have what? Been with me from the beginning. See, he's he's he said, he's he's telling them that these things that I'm telling you now, you're gonna be able to talk, you're gonna be able to see these things come to pass. Amen. Then you're gonna remember that I've already told you about these things. That's what he was talking about right here when he said, Upon this rock, I'll build my church. Jesus was forth telling the thing was going to take place. Amen. And so now he said in, in Matthew chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15, verse number 26, Jesus, he, 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 he bring, he bringing all it back to their remembrance because now he's, he's bringing it to pass. He's bringing it to pass and he's establishing the church and they remember what he said back in, in that, in the early days. Amen. Because he, the Bible, because the Holy Spirit bringing it all back to their remembrance. Amen. The thing that he has said. So when, now God is establishing the church. Now God is establishing the church to, to, to overcome the powers of the kingdom of darkness. Not to walk in line with the kingdom of darkness. Not to be dictated to by the kingdom of darkness. But to overcome the kingdom of darkness. Amen. To overcome the kingdom of darkness. That means you got to walk in line with the word of God. you got to come in agreement with the word of God. you got to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And you got and you got to understand what God is saying to you. Amen. Because God is not going to tell you to do something you can't do. Everything God tells you to do, believe me, you can do it. Amen. You can do it. Because I've done a whole lot of things that I thought I'd never be able to do. Look at uh, chapter 16, verse number 15, verse number 13. John chapter 16, verse number 13. And it says, Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into what? All truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And he will show you things to come. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is it, it brings us into remembrance of all the things that God had had, had purposed for us to understand. Amen. But see, we have to we have to see what God is saying to us. Now we have to, let's look at that right here. Let's look at let's look at it right here. In let me just turn there for, uh, to that in the Amplified Bible, Amen. Because I want to see that in the Amplified Bible, chapter fifteen and verse number twenty six, right? Amen. Verse number twenty six in the Amplified Bible says, it says this, Amen. This. But when the but when the the Helper, the Comforter, the Advocate. The intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby comes, whom I will send to you from my Father. That that is the Spirit of Truth, who come from the Father. He will testify and bear witness before me about me. I mean, verse number twenty-seven. But you will testify also. And be my witnesses. Notice that. But you will testify also and will be my witnesses. 
because you have been with me from the beginning. See, everything that God is talking about concerning who about this upon this rock I will build my church, everything God is talking about, God is bringing to our remembrance. God is helping us to see, know, and to understand the things that He prepared for us to walk in. Amen. As the church, He said, Upon this rock I will build my church. He said, The gates of hell shall what? Shall not prevail against it. So why is it that the church is being overcome by the kingdom of darkness? Why is it that, that man is trying to overthrow the church? Trying to tell the church that you can't open, you can't close, you got to do this, you got to do that. When God said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. So we're not, we got to come to, we got to come to the knowledge of what God has said in order to walk in that power, to walk in that authority. We got to understand that God, what God said, God meant what he said. And, and, and let me tell you something, folks. If God meant what he said, then God is not going to take, he's not going to take a back seat to what he said. God is going to hold the church accountable to what he has said. Amen. God's going to hold the church accountable to what he has said. Amen. So we cannot, we cannot back down. We cannot turn. See, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus still had, uh, uh, under, Jesus still had to go, had to undergo the cross and uh, ex, the cross experience, and then he had to go. Then he, then he experienced what? Because he, because he uh, went through the cross experience. What else did he experience? Yeah. No, he experienced the resurrection. He experienced the resurrection. See, what, what God, when God gave a, an assignment, you can't kill it. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory to God. When God gives an assignment, and when God's hands rest upon that assignment, and you and you walk in, in faith to carry out that assignment, God is going to confirm his word. God will not allow that assignment to die. He's not going to allow that assignment to die. So we have to we have to understand that God is not God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man that he should repent. Hath not God said it? And shall he not make it good? Amen. So we just need to hold fast to what, what God said. Amen. See, so Jesus still had to undergo the cross and, and experience the resurrection. Although the disciples under, understood it, understood in part. They don't understood, understood in part. And amen. The fulfillment of all Jesus had come to do had not yet been uh, accomplished. Amen. After the resurrection, Jesus would not allow his followers to begin to walk. To begin to work hand in hand. Amen. It was after Jesus' resurrection that he allowed his disciples to go working hand in hand according to what he had given them. Amen. Remember, the church came under great persecution. Amen. And the disciples were scattered. Were scattered. And that's when Philip began to preach. Amen. That when that began when he began when he went and joined himself down with the eunuch. Amen. Glory to God. And, and let me tell you something, folks. God wants you to begin to join yourself to the unbeliever. And, but he wants you to, not to be overcome with, by the unbeliever. He wants you to, to, to bring the light of the word to them. To bring the light of the word to them. Because you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Amen. A sin that's sin upon the hill cannot be hid. Glory to God. You are the purpose that God has sent his son. So that you could see the light. And now that you've seen the light, it's time for you to walk in. But you might, you might be like Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Some say thou, John the Baptist. And some say Elijah. Uh, and others say oh, uh, Jeremiah or oh, one of the prophets. But then Jesus brought it right home to them. But he said, but who do you say that I am? And all of them was quiet. All 12 of them were just quiet. Then all of a sudden, there was a download came from heaven, dropped into Peter's heart, and because Peter was a big mouth, Peter was a bold man. Amen. And he just, and he just, he was just, he was a, a faith man. But he had his challenges just like everyone else. But most of all, Peter was, above all, Peter was a faith man. And God downloaded into Peter, and Peter stood up and said, Thou art the Christ. The Son of the Living God, Amen. And and now and now and now and Jesus answered and said unto him, 
So blessed are thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I and I say upon uh, and I say unto you, Petra, Amen. That means a separated stone. Because once he acknowledged that God, that he was, that Jesus was the Christ, he became separate from the other eleven. Amen. Amen. And then he said, and upon this rock, upon this knowledge, upon this revelation, I will build my church. And now Peter goes on to the Hebrew portions of the New Testament. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because of the knowledge that he received. Glory to God. Y'all understand what I'm starting to say to y'all today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because see, we got a long time to, to, to get all this information and to, to digest it and everything. So don't try to don't try to get it all in one in one in one lump sum. Amen. Then look at the book of Matthew chapter twenty eight verse nineteen and Matthew chapter twenty eight. Mm -hmm. Can we go back to the book of Matthew one quick for a minute there? Amen. Glory to God. And in Matthew chapter twenty eight, look right here. Now know what it says right here because you see, how can you carry out the assignment? if you don't know that you have the ability to do so. Mm -hmm. Amen. No, I like this. I like this. Look what it said right here. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 16. It said, verse number, uh, excuse me, yeah, verse number 19. Mm -hmm. Matthew 28, verse 19. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of what? The Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them. To observe all things whatsoever I have what? Amen. Commanded you. Amen. So everything that the disciples had learned while they were walking with Jesus, God is he, he, he giving them permission now. He giving them permission now to go and to teach it. Go and to declare it. Go and to show forth what God has done. <coughs> Amen. So when we come to this place, when we come to this knowledge, we see God is carrying out his assignment. Amen. God is carrying out his assignment. Glory to God. Amen. Notice what he said now. Notice what he said now. Look, let's let, read verse number 20 again. Mm -hmm. Teaching them to observe all things. Glory to God. Whatsoever I have commanded thee, whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. I'm in. Glory to God. Glory to God. You see, now, we, we, have, we have a good place. We have a good place. Where it's not what you are, but what God can make of you. See, God wants you to become, he wants you to become a mighty vessel in his hand. He wants you to be one that is, that is uh, yielded. He wants you to become one that have an understanding of who Christ is. One that walking with a revelation of who Christ is. Amen. Because without that revelation, you're going to be in trouble. Amen. Amen. Because you'll never be able to carry out your assignment if you don't know him. Amen. See, the enemy is going to come against you. But remember, if you know him, if you have revelation of him, and you're walking clean, the Bible said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. The demons are not scared of you. They're scared of a holy man. They're scared of a holy woman. Amen. They're not scared of just a, a, a natural man. Remember? State, uh, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Amen. And the son of Stephen, they jumped all over this man and, and, he, he, and he ran away barely getting away with his life. Amen. Because he did not know who Christ was. He did not understand the anointing. He did not understand the power that comes with that name. But those that have a revelation of this name, those that have knowledge of this name, those that 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 that, that understand this name, God said, "The gates of hell shall not prevail against it." Amen. Will not be able to overcome it. Will not be able to overcome it. The church need to come back to the knowledge of who Christ is. Because once they come back to the knowledge of who Christ is, then they will find out also that they have power over the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Amen. Over witchcraft. Over satanic spirits. Over uh, sat uh, whatever. Seducing spirit. Over familiar spirit. Over whatever spirit that you're dealing with. Amen. 
Amen. Because you see, the gates of hell, I mean, it covers every demon, every, every aspect of darkness there is. Mm -hmm. Amen. But God said, it will not prevail against you. It will not prevail against you. Amen. So we got to come to the knowledge of who Christ is. So who is Christ to you? Who is Christ to you? Are you, uh, do you have the knowledge of who Christ is? Or do you just know about what you read? Do you really know him in your heart? Because if you really know him, then there's a revelation in your heart that keeps you from sin. Because Christ never sinned. If you have a revelation of Christ in your heart, then you have a, a revelation that's going to keep you from sin. Oh, how Pastor, did you say? Yes, I said that. <laughs> I sure did. Amen. What What are you talking about, Pastor? I, re, you know, if you can't even you can't cast out a devil if you if you full of sin yourself. How can you cast out a devil when you when you're a devil yourself? A king divided a king divided against himself cannot stand. Amen. But when you're clean, when, because God said, "Be ye holy, for God, for I am holy." But when you become clean, when you become holy, now you got power to stand against the kingdom of darkness. Amen. It come, And it also comes with knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Am I making any sense to you today? Amen. Hallelujah. So when we come to understand that God is going to begin to, God is going to, begin to bring you to, to, to an understanding of, of who you are, we see here, a group of men and women whom Jesus had, whom Jesus has to openly rebuke. Amen. Let's look back here in Matthew chapter 18 again. Amen. In Matthew chapter 18, he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. That's Mark 20. chapter. Uh, oh Matthew my God. 20. Huh? Matthew 28, he said, these, these are people who, who, oh, glory to God. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Now why is he telling them to go teach all nations? Because they was, they, 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 they was experienced. Look what he stepped back up a little bit. Let's, let me just show you here. Start verse number 13. Saying, say ye his disciples, come and by night and, and stole him away. See, they of the spirit of deception is trying to move out across the land right here. Mm -hmm. Spirit of deception. They said, tell them, go tell them that the disciples came and moved him out by night. The disciples didn't go move him out by night. Amen. The, the, that was a lie. The Holy Ghost came and moved him out of there. <laughs> Not the disciples. Amen. True. Amen. The truth didn't come to it either. Amen. But notice what it said, verse number 14. Verse number 14 said, And if and if this come to the governor's ears, we will secure, we will persuade him and secure you. So they see, so so now that's why Jesus told the disciples, go into all the world and teach and, and, and go to the world and teach all nations. Why? Because he see that the world is trying to teach the nation a different story, a different lesson about what happened to Jesus. Amen. So he, he tell his disciples because he came now. He visited with his disciples and he tell them to go tell, go teach all nations now. Go teach all nations. What? Teach what? The same thing that I just, the same thing that I talked to you the whole time I was with you, and even this, even about this very incident that is taking place here today. Go teach them. Go teach them. Go share it. Go go and expose the kingdom of darkness. Expose it. Don't let the kingdom of darkness get away with this. Go and share with the people about this life. Amen. Go and share with the people about this life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So it said verse number and verse number verse number 15 says again. So they took the they took the money and did as the and as they were taught. And saying this, and, and this and this saying is and this saying is com is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. So that, 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 that the same lie that they started is still alive. Amen. So that's why the truth must go forth. Amen. That's why you must come to the knowledge of who Christ is. Because if you don't know who Christ is, you, can't, you cannot declare what I just read. You can't declare it. Because you still believe in the lie. 
that the disciples came by night and took him. Amen. But let me tell you what really happened. <laughs> oh, glory to God. On that third day, mm. on a great awakening day, getting up morning. <laughs> whoo, that, that great getting up morning, he said. <laughs> he rose on that third day. Oh, glory to God. With all power, both in heaven and earth, he said, it's in my hand. And then he said, go. <laughs> Go! My God. Go, my God. Let, let's look at let, let, let me just show what I, I it's in the word what I just said. It's in the word. It's in the word. Let me show you right here. Look at first number, first number 16 said, Even then the eleventh disciples went away into Galilee unto in, into the mountain where Jesus had appeared, had appointed them, and when they were and when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. But some doubted. Verse number 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power. There it is, folks. All power. Glory to God. Is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Then he said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And teach them to observe all things which I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of this world. Amen. That's God, folks. That's God giving us our assignment. Amen. That's God giving the church his assignment. He never told the church to yield to this kingdom of darkness. He never told the church to be barked down. He never told the church to close his doors. He never told the church to, to stop declaring his word. What the disciples said when the when the when the when the, when the rulers told them to, to, to stop to, to, don't don't teach this man's name don't don't preach and teach this man's name he said we cannot but teach that what we have seen and what we have heard we cannot but speak what we have seen and what we have heard amen glory to God if we must obey anyone we're going to obey God see God has given us our assignment folks and we must understand what God is saying to us but if you don't understand who Christ is. You're not going to be the one that's going to be standing in these last days. You're going to be one that's been caught off guard and the enemy has seduced you to believe a lie. Amen. And, you, and, and, this is, and this is really not what you want. This is not what you really want. You want to know what God is saying and you want to follow the truth to what God is saying because to what God is saying is going to bring you to a, 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 a powerful stand against the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Going to bring you to a powerful stand against the kingdom of darkness. And folks, and that's what we ultimately want. Am I right? Amen. Now let's look at the book of Acts. The book of Acts chapter 1. The book of Acts chapter 1. Hallelujah. Are y'all getting anything out of this today? Yeah. Amen. In Acts chapter 1, let's look at verse number, glory to God, verse number 4. And notice what he said right in verse number 4. He said, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should what? Not depart from Jerusalem, but what? Wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water in the wood. But John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Amen. So he, 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 he referred back, he referred back <clears throat> to the point when he went to Jordan to be baptized. Mm -hmm. Amen. And but he said, now, but John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with not many days hence. What is he saying now? You shall receive what? Power. Amen. Now look, now let's back up one more time. Let's back up to the book of Luke. Chapter 24, if you don't mind, please. Luke chapter 24, verse number 49. Amen. It says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. He's talking to who? He's talking to the church. He's talking to the church. He said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. God never called the church to be quiet. God never called the church to be silent. God gave the church power to declare, to speak, to prophesy. 
to warn the people of the pin danger that is coming. He never told the church to be quiet. He told the church to open his mouth wide and declare what he has said. Amen. And then it said right here, and it said right here, verse number 49 again, it said, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem till ye be endued with power from on high. Amen. And this, and when this came to pass, it was right before Jesus Christ was about to be taken up from them. Amen. Look at Acts, but go back to the book of Acts again, because the church is getting ready to start now. The church is getting ready to go full power, because now the church is about to receive power to be the witnesses of Christ that he created them to be. Amen. Glory to God. So he says right here in Acts chapter chapter 1 again. That what I told you to go? Anyway, let's go there. Acts chapter 1. And then look at verse number 6, 7, and 8. And then verse number 9. Amen. Because the church now is about to take on the responsibility the same thing that Jesus did. Remember what he said in, in John chapter 14, verse number 12? Mm -hmm. He said, the works that I do, verily, verily I say unto you, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. Now we see here that Jesus now is about to, is, he, 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 has, he has died and he's resurrected. He's with the disciples. He's given them the final instructions. And right here we're going to see that he is about to be taken up from them. Notice what he says right here. Right here, verse number, verse number six. Start back reading verse number six. When they, when they therefore were come together, they asked to him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father put in his own power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the other parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up by a, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse number 10 says, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, because see, he's been taken up now, but while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, Two men stood by him, stood by them in white apparel, which said, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go up into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem. From the Mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into what? An upper room. An upper room. Where abode both Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Aphel, and Simon, Zelote, and Judah, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication and the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren and in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples now see remember what he said in, 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 in Matthew chapter chapter 16 verse number 18 said and I say unto you upon this rock I will build my church. Amen. Amen. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. Now, this rock is starting to speak up. Mm -hmm. Right here in the book of Acts, this rock is starting to speak up. This rock is one of, is one of the first one that is proclaiming, mm -hmm. the first one that is speaking about Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can y'all see? Y'all understand that now, right? Because... You see, because you see, once you get once we get in this state, we're gonna go, we're gonna continue along this line through the book of Acts. Amen. Because the book of Acts is is showing us 
the works of Christ. The works of Christ. So you can do the works of Christ, but you need to come to the knowledge of who Christ is. Do you know who Christ is? Yeah, you shaking your head. <laughs> you saying yes, yeah, but what happened? What happened if someone come up in front of you, de demon possessed? Will you still say you know Christ, or will you say get out? Yeah, you take off running. No, you're not going to run. You shouldn't. Most of us. You shouldn't. That's why you got to know the knowledge. You have to come to the revelation of knowledge of who Christ is, and then on top of that, you got to have. You got to be clean. You got to be clean. You got to be clean because the devil's not going to run from a man, but from a holy man. The devil run from him every time. Hallelujah. Because a holy man, a holy man is just like Jesus standing. Woo! Glory to God. That's why God is calling us to righteousness and holiness. Because only then will you be able to stand against the kingdom of darkness with the revelation knowledge of who Christ is. Because if you have a revelation knowledge of who Christ is, then you have also a revelation knowledge that Christ walked sinless. He walked sinless. Mm -hmm. And in him, there was no sin. Because there was no sin, no devil could stand before him and prevail. That's why, he gave, that's why Jesus said in, in, Mark, in Matthew chapter 16, he said, upon this rock, upon this knowledge, upon this truth, upon this revelation, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Of God. See, he's talking about the church. He's talking about you. He's talking about me. Woo. And that's why he said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. Amen. How can we take a stand for righteousness when we are standing against righteousness? That's why it's so important, folks. That's why it's so important that we begin to... I, 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 I would suggest that y'all take this scripture from Matthew and just start reading them over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Amen. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 13 through... Let me just turn over there. Because I'm going to give you an assignment. <laughs> I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you verse number 13. Through, nine, through through 18. Mm -hmm. Amen. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Let's go a little further. Verse number 13 through 19. Mm -hmm. And I want y'all to take these, take this assignment seriously. Take this assignment seriously. Because in doing so, you're going to hear from heaven. I'm, I'm telling you, you're going to hear from heaven. I want you to read it over and over and over and over, and I want you to start meditating upon these scriptures. Matthew chapter 13 through 19. Meditate upon them. Read them over and over and over and over and over and over, and let it begin to settle in your spirit. Once it begins, see, it's in your mind already because you've been reading with me. It's in, you already have it in your mind. You, it needs it need to go from your mind into your, into your spirit. Amen. Once it enters into your spirit, then God's going to begin to reveal to you who Christ is. Woo! Woo! Glory to That's God. What it is. Huh? The sound God. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm telling you. When you, when, if you do what I'm, if you do what I'm asking you to do, God's going to begin to give you revelation knowledge. Yes. He's going to give you revelation knowledge of who Christ is. And God said, "Upon this rock." The revelation that Peter got from God at that point, he, God said, Jesus said, upon this rock, hallelujah, I will build my church. In other words, I am establishing a foundation of who I am within your heart. And upon this knowledge, I will build my church. Yes. Woo, glory to God. Amen. And so we see right here in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, now I'm going back over the book of Acts now. I showed y'all, I gave y'all Simon right there. Now in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts chapter 1, Chapter 1 again. Glory to God. And the book of Acts chapter 1. Notice what he said right here. Because see Peter. Now he's acting. Upon that rock. That God called him. He's beginning to act upon that rock. Notice what he said right here. 
Glory to God. My hour is up right now. It just stopped. <laughs> Amen. So he said right here in, 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 in uh, 1 Peter, no, 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 in Acts chapter 1, verse number 14, mm -hmm. because Peter is now beginning to stand up and begin to declare the things of Jesus Christ. Notice what he said. And Peter, standing up with the, with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my voice, hearken to my words. Amen. See, now Peter is acting out the knowledge that God said, upon this rock, I will build my church. He's acting out of this knowledge right now. Amen. Verse number 15 said, For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is only... See, this is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come in the, in the past. In the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. See, now we're in the time, we're in the, we're coming to the season that all flesh has to receive out the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because during this era, during this era, during this season, during this this, this last day, this last move of the Holy Ghost, there's about to become, there's about to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit like the world has never seen. Amen. With signs, wonders, and miracles. That's why we have to come to the knowledge of who Christ is, because without the knowledge of who Christ is, you will not see the signs, wonders, and miracles that God is talking about. <clears throat> you got to understand this. In order, because if you read, if you want to uh, go forward in your walk with God, then you need to understand this because God is about to do a new thing in the earth, and it's going to go, it's going to supersede anything that the world has ever seen. <coughs> Y'all need to get this. Y'all need to get this because God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son that he should repent. Amen. Because Peter is now acting out of the knowledge that was revealed to him. When Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Amen. And he said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. And others said you are Jeremiah, uh, 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 Elijah, or one of the prophets. But then he, brought, he broke it down to him. He said, but who do you say that I am? <clears throat> and Peter said, and see, it was just it was just silent. Then all of a sudden, because everybody was looking at one another, <laughs> who's going to speak first? Amen. And Peter received a revelation knowledge from the Father, and he said, he stood up, raised his hand, "You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God." And Jesus turned around, and looked at Peter, and said. Oh, Simon by John, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but it was from my Father. And I say unto you, upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, folks, the church comes not in word only, but the church is established in power, in power, power. Hallelujah. Can y'all understand that? Because he said, verse number 19, Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 19, he, he, did, he, said, he said, now, whatever you bind on earth, he said, behold, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. See, God, not this is the authority that you were just referring to. God has given the authority. God has given us his word. God has given us his power. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. He said, and whatever you bind on earth. See, he's given up, he not only given up the church, he not only given the church authority, but he's given the church the keys to the, to the kingdom. The keys to the kingdom is the authority that he has given us to operate in this earth. Behold, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In other words, whatever you do is already been done in heaven. Whatever you do in earth is already been taken care of in heaven. Amen. Glory to God. So when we come to the when we come to understand this, now God is telling us now is that God is telling us that uh I 
I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh now. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. Your old men shall dream dreams. Amen. And you and, 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 and in those days I will pour out my spirit, amen, and upon your maidens, upon your handmaidens. And your servants. Amen. See, everyone gonna have an opportunity to experience the goodness of the Lord in these last days. Holy hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone will have an opportunity to experience the goodness of the Lord in these last days. How much you love Come on now. Amen. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Who is he asking that to? He asking his, he, he's talking to who? He's talking to Peter. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. See, he was the rock. That start, he, he's the one that started out with the revelation. He said, do you love me? Feed my lambs. See, he's reminding him. And then he said, do you love me? Then Peter said, oh, master, you know that I love you. Why you keep asking? He said, feed my sheep. Okay. For the time coming, they're going to, you, you, you won't believe it, they're going to believe in you. See, God knows what's going to come. God knows what's coming. God knows what's coming. And God wants you ready. Everybody say, well, well, who you think you are? What, you, you, what, what tree did you grow up on? I didn't grow up on no tree. <laughs> I ain't no way. <laughs> <laughs> tree of life. <laughs> I'm a, I am a, 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 I am a branch of the true vine. I'm connected to the true vine. If I'm separated from the true vine, then there's no life in me. I'm cast forth as a branch and withered. And the uh, enemy comes and grabs me and throws me in the fire of furnace. <laughs> but I am a branch of the vine. The true vine. Hallelujah. And my father is the husband man. So, my friend, I, my time, I'm over time now. I got to stop. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop right now. But I wanted y'all to understand this because, you see, next week, we're going to go deeper in what we're just talking about today because we're still talking about upon this rock, I will build my church. We need to know what the church is. How can we carry out the assignment? We don't know what the church is. Amen. You think it's this building? No. This is a meeting place, and it's but, but believe me, it has been it has been touched by the presence of God. Mm, right. Amen. It has been sanctified by the presence of God, but this is not the church. We are the church, and that's it. Because this building can't go into all the world, but you can. <laughs> you can. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's prepare, glory. Let's go ahead and prepare our offering for today. Let's go and prepare our offering for today. Amen. Because we serve a good God, folks. I want y'all to give to God today like you never gave before. Do something like you never did before. If you never gave but ten dollars, do twenty. If you never gave but 30, do, do, do 60. If you never gave more than 50, do 100. If you never gave more than 100, do 200. If you never gave no more than 500, give 1,000. Amen. You won't, you, won't, you won't be doing more than I've ever done. No, what I'm doing today. Amen.
Because I believe that when I give, it is given unto me good measure, pressed down. But they is seven, right? Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> amen, amen, amen. Are you by the internet, you want to sow a seed today? Go to my website, LarryBergenMinistries.com. You that are on Facebook, you want to sow a seed, just sow your seed right there on that donation button. Amen. We believe that God that we serve, that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Right. Glory to God. And God wants to do something right now in your life. But it's going to, you know, it's going to take you stepping out of the box. It's going to take you stepping out of the box. Amen. Are you willing to step out of the box? So go to my website, LabrickMinistries.com, and plant that seed. Glory to God. Put it up there also in the Facebook thing. Amen. Glory to God. Father, we thank you right now. We praise you and we glorify you, Father. God, you reveal great truth into our hearts. You help us to understand who we really are. God, we are not a people without hope. God, we are a people with hope, and we want to spread that hope so others that are that are that that, that, that faith has been weakened, faith has been 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 uh, shipwrecked. Father, we want to help them to get back on the right track, help them get back on the right on the right path. God, help us to be the light, help us to be the church you created us to be. And as we do, Father. Let us support the church as you would have us to. Let us give so it will be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give back to our bosom. Father, ever since the world been, there's always been seed time and harvest. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your people. We thank you, Father, for those that are giving. We thank you, Lord God, for the seed that's been sown. We speak over this seed. We say this seed is blessed. This seed is blessed by the presence of Almighty God. And we say, Father, we declare that every need is met according to your riches and glory upon everyone that is sowing this seed today. And we declare, Father, that people are being set free from from sicknesses and disease, Father, because they're giving. They're giving into this ministry, Lord God. And God, this anointing upon this ministry is, Father, it will deliver your people from sicknesses and diseases because, God, your presence is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. And so, Father, we release that anointing right now to upon every heart and every soul under my voice. We thank you, Father, for signs, wonders, and miracles for those that are giving, those that are re releasing their faith and sowing their seed today, Father. Let them be partakers of the miracle handiwork of Almighty God today. I thank you, and I say that it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if any of you have prayer requests, go ahead on and send us your prayer requests. Let us agree. Let us come in agreement with you. Let us pray with you. Amen. Because we serve a God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. That's the thing. That's right. And we, it's time for communion. Y'all hear me preach all the time. Maybe forgot, almost maybe forgot about my communion. <laughs> amen, amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. So we're gonna go ahead and prepare for communion. Right now, go to the book of Matt, uh, 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 First Corinthians. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Second Corinthians, First Corinthians, I mean, chapter eleven. We're, we're not going to take. We're not. We're not going to keep you too much longer. 
But this is communion. We need to take communion. Amen. And those of you that are with us by home right now, get your communion and get your communion stuff together. Your drink, your cracker, amen. Amen. If you don't have a, a juice, just get some water. Amen. And bless it. If Jesus can transform water into wine, then you can transform water into wine too. By faith. Amen. Father, we thank you as we prepare for communion today. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we will come to remember that you are the Son of God and that you laid down your life for this purpose. The Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. And Father, reveal your nature, reveal your character to our hearts. The purpose of the shed blood. Father, help us to see the purpose and help us to acknowledge this purpose in Jesus' name. Those of you that got your cracker and you got your juice together, you let's go ahead and prepare. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 23, For this, Mr. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. The Lord Jesus, the same night which he was betrayed, took bread. But when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Glory to God. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Verse number 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the blood of the body and of the blood of the Lord. For let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drank it unworthily, eat and drank damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we will judge ourselves, get this folks. If we will judge ourselves, mm -hmm. you got that? Mm -hmm. If we will judge ourselves, mm -hmm. we should not be judged. Mm -hmm. If we do what? Yes. If we will judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Mm -hmm. Right now, I just want you to just purposely close your eyes and judge yourself. God said, if you judge yourself, you will not be judged. Judge yourself right now. And if there's any sin in your heart and in your life, repent of it right now and ask God to forgive you and help you not to continue along that line. Father, in the name of Jesus, we judge ourselves now. Thank you, Lord. God said, if you judge yourself, you will not be judged. If you will judge yourself, you will not be judged. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pass out the elements. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me have one back. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Boy, this is a really sacred moment. This is a time when God is revealing his sovereignty. God is holy. For those of you that have taken communion with us, this crack represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They took Jesus, probably wanted to let him go, but the crowd, the religious people, the crowd cried, crucify him, crucify him, for he made himself a king. And Pilate wanted to let him go because he found no fault in this man. The accusation that was brought against him but didn't add up. Pilate wanted to let him go. But they said, if you let him go, you're not Caesar's friend. So they took Jesus and they took him out and scourged him. They placed upon him a purple robe and they put a crown of thrones upon his head and they hung him between two staves and they tied him up and they beat him. 39 splashes across his back. Every strike went across his back was for your healing was for your deliverance. The pain that he suffered was the pain that you experience today. Today, there's healing in this communion. There's deliverance in this communion. That's why God wants you to judge yourself that you will not be judged. Say this with me, Jesus, I repent of all my sin. Forgive me, Lord. I judge myself so that the world will not be able to judge me. Jesus, I present my body to you, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, which is my reasonable service. Today, I dedicate my life to you. Here's his bread, his body right here. Let's break it. And let us eat. Receive your healing now. I speak to pain throughout the body. I rebuke you by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I command you to go from the body. Go from the people. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I praise you for it. I give you glory for it, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. You bore our sicknesses. You carried our diseases. And by your strife, Lord God, we are healed. We thank you, Father. We receive healing right now. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for it. We praise you for it, Lord God. Hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Glory to your name, Lord God. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we receive. Oh, glory. This cup represents the blood that was shed on Calvary. Remember how they beat him? They marched him up to Calvary. Amen. And, and they laid him on his cross. And they, and they lift him up between heaven and earth. And as he hung there, there was uh, two men on either side, one of, a man on either side of Jesus. And one of them railed on Jesus and said, look at you. You say you're the son of God. Get yourself down in us too. And then the other man said, leave him alone. This man had done nothing wrong. But you and I, we deserve what is coming to us. But this man had done nothing wrong. Then he looked at Jesus and Jesus Remember me when you enter your kingdom. And Jesus stopped dying for a minute. He looked at this man and said, This day, this day, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Oh, and he and he and he looked down. And he looked up. 
And he said, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabastani, which being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he laid his head in the lock of his shoulder and he gave up the ghost. And he said, it is finished. As we partake of this cup today, I say to you, it is finished. Redemption is yours today. What the devil has meant for evil has been turned around for the glory of God today. Today, the promise is fulfilled in your hearts. That he took our sins and he bare our sicknesses. And by his stripes and by the atonement of his blood, we've been redeemed and we are healed. Let us drink. Ah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We praise you. We glorify you. We acknowledge you, Father. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. You are our King. We thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. If you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life right now, I'm telling you, oh, what an opportune time is now to acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. To acknowledge him and say, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. If that's you, you would like to say this prayer with me, whether you're here with us or here by the internet, say this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Father, I present my body to you as a living sacrifice. Jesus, come into my heart, create in me a right spirit, and renew in me a clean heart. I believe that you are the Son of God, and I believe you died for my sin. I accept that today in my heart. Amen. If you accept that day in your heart right now, God is working on you. Today, you are born again, child of the Most High God. If you will die today, you will spend eternity with heaven, in heaven with him. Amen. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We praise you. If anyone here today, you need prayer, I will pray for you right now. Glory to God. Anyone here today need prayer, I'll pray for you right now. Hallelujah. Come on up here. I pray for you right now. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cancel every demonic assignment against her mind, her will, her emotions. Right now, in the name of Jesus, open up her eyes. Show her that which is hidden from her, Father. Let the secret thing that, that has been hidden from her be, be made known in the name of Jesus. And God, I'm asking you for peace that surpasses all of us and begin to rest upon her heart and her mind in the name of Jesus. And Father, I'm asking you, I'm asking you today, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, to show her that thing that concerns her heart the most, concerning her mother. Show her so that she will have peace with herself and in her heart. And God, I thank you for it right now in Jesus' mighty name. And God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. And we pray for the uh, family members, for salvation for our family members in the name of Jesus. And God, you know who they are. You know them by name. You washed over them. You, you breathe the breath of life in them. Now, Father, we lift them up before you, Father, her entire family. We claim their soul for the kingdom of God. And we thank you. Let the angels go forth now. Ministry hosts go forth right now. In the name of Jesus, to minister salvation to their hearts. In Jesus' name. Let the labors go forth right now. 
into the harvest field and minister to them. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother, and I lift them up before you, Father. I lay my hands upon him, Father, and I decree and declare, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the peace of God that surpasses of all understanding will keep his heart and his mind, Father, and everything, God, that is contrary to your will, to your purpose, to your plan for his life, Father, is being nailed and void right now in the name of Jesus. It's been stopped right now in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you that no weapon formed against him will prosper. Lord, your kingdom come and your will be done in this life. I give you the glory for it now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. You want? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray for my brother right now. And I lift them up before you, Father. I declare, Father, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, Father, that he's free, that he's walking in divine health. I counsel every demonic assignment against his health right now. You spirit of infirmity, I rebuke you off of him. And I declare that he's walking in divine health. He's healed in Jesus' name. And I speak to the organs of his chest. And I speak restoration to you now in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that his heart is beating properly. In the, reg in, in the, the regulating of the heartbeat is, 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 is regular and is functioning properly in Jesus' name. And I thank Father for uh, a blood pressure, blood pressure in the name of Jesus. It's normal. It's normal in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, shit. Now, Father, I pray for those that are with us by the internet. In the name of Jesus, I take authority against high blood pressure. I take authority against high blood pressure. I command you to come to normal right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Irregular heartbeats. I rebuke you, irregular heartbeats. I command you to function properly now in Jesus' name. Yes. And Father, I give you all the praise and all the glory for what you're doing in your body right now. And God, I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you all for joining us today. And I hope you join us back here again tonight. Amen. We have a, a word tonight that's going to bless your heart and I believe that you'll be glad you have joined us tonight we love you until then God bless you my name is Pastor Larry Burke you like the Christ Jesus Church of Sacramento California until then be blessed bye bye Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise. Glory.